what I want to talk about now is that this is a pretty big topic. You might not think it's so big, but have you guys been noticing that at the top of the screen it, it has a little spinning arrow and it's either got a 5 or a 4. It might have a number. I don't know what your number says. Mine's got a 5. That is our indicator of updates. We've got updates <coughs> on our site. And because WordPress is software, like every other software, there's updates. There's new versions of it. If you have used a Windows computer for a few years, maybe you had Windows 7, and then now you have maybe Windows 10. If you had a Mac, you might have had Mac, you know, OS 10 Lion, and then you had OS 10 Mountain Lion, or you might have, you know, one of the new ones, Mavericks or whatever. The software changes. <coughs> On your phone, you might have an Android or an iPhone. And maybe a few months ago or years ago, suddenly your phone changed a lot. The icons were so different, you lost, I can't find anything anymore. Well, there's updates on your phone as well. There's updates on software all the time. And it might be annoying for us because things change, things get removed, and I'm so used to something always clicking here, and now it's moved. Well, the reason for software is to always, a couple of reasons. One is, the big one is to always be ahead of the bad guys. The bad guys that are trying to hack the code, to break the code, to steal your credit card, to steal your password, whatever. The bad guys are always trying to find problems in the code to exploit. So the, the software people have to create a new version of it to fix the holes. Software can easily have thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of lines of code. And it could be that one line, one sentence, one command could be wrong in the millions lines of code and that makes your site vulnerable. So that's why software updates are valuable. Yes, sometimes they change the interface, they, maybe they slow things down, maybe they annoy you, but the theory about them is that they're supposed to be fixing problems. The other aspect of software updates is maybe sometimes they do just want to change the design and the look of it and that sort of thing. And with WordPress, every once in a while there's a new version. Let's have a discussion now about updates, because this is a bigger topic than, than you might think. WordPress updates. Purpose. To fix software bugs and vulnerabilities. and or to enhance uh, the software. New features and such. Updates usually are to fix problems and to give you new features. And so that sounds great, then that means I want to update as soon as possible, right? That might be a trick question. If you're a beginner, you might think, yes, I want to update my software, I want to fix these bugs, I want to get the new features. But there could be problems that are caused by doing updates. I remember when uh, one of the biggest gripes 10 years ago, 12 years ago, whatever, when Windows Vista came out. There was Win Windows 98, and then Windows Vista came out. And everyone hated it because a lot of things didn't work anymore. Suddenly that mouse didn't work anymore. My printer didn't work anymore. People had a lot of broken software because Vista changed a lot of the internals. And therefore that mouse maybe didn't work anymore, which a lot of us need a mouse to use a computer. And so this is what I'm saying about maybe you shouldn't rush to get the latest updates. That's why we're having this discussion because the latest version of of the WordPress software could cause problems to your er, to your older versions of the software. So we need to talk about a more uh, full-featured plan for updates. So I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend here. Do not update until you know there are no problems. And that could be 
a lot of effort. And that button is always up there. Update, <coughs> update, update. The button's always there. But you shouldn't really click it right away unless you know what you're doing. We're going to talk about that right now. Because there are three big um, aspects of updates. What to update. WordPress core, themes, and plugins. WordPress core. That's when you go from version you know, 4.0 of WordPress over to 4.1. Or right now it's telling us get version 4.5. Eventually at, at, a, at a certain point we had version 3.7 or whatever of WordPress. We had different versions of the main WordPress software. When there's a jump of this of the whole number here, usually it's a big change. From WordPress 3 to WordPress 4, usually a big change, lots of new features, lots of changes. So if you've currently got a, a site and it's on WordPress 3 or it's on WordPress 2, I would hesitate about jumping to 4 because it could change a lot on your site. It could break things. The smaller number here, the, the, the tens, the fraction, um, if it goes from 0. From zero, from point zero to point one, that might not be a big of a, as big of a change. There might be some security issues and, and things like that that might not cause big problems. We have the themes. That's of course the design of your site. The design of your site may change because it's made out of CSS code. HTML code, JavaScript code, PHP code probably, lots of code. And one small vulnerability in your code could leave, your, uh, could leave, could leave you at, at stake that someone hacks your site and seals your user's credit card's information or their addresses, home addresses and such. So all of these three could be a failure point. Maybe you have your WordPress core software to the newest version. But maybe that plugin that you're using that you really like because it makes a cute little Twitter icon hasn't been updated in a year, and that's been a whole year for someone to figure out what's broken. We talked about that last week when we talked about plugins, didn't we? I was saying try to get plugins that have been updated relatively recently, three months, maybe six months. But that's six months, nine months, twelve months for someone to figure out what's wrong with this. And yes, there are people that spend all day long. Their office job, when they clock in, is to figure out how to break this plugin. This one-year-old plugin that 5,000 people are using. That could be 5,000 potential credit cards to steal. So even your theme, that theme that you found on Google when you searched best restaurant themes, and you found one for, for free, and you installed it, but it has not been updated in nine months, that could be a theme that is vulnerable. And same thing with plugins. These are extra features added to your WordPress. All three of these could have updates. And I wrote them in this order because this is the order that I recommend that you update them in. First your WordPress core, it's the foundation. It's literally the floor we're standing on right here. WordPress is the floor we're standing on. Then the theme, update that. That's like the design of this room. We've got this paint on the wall and this design for the roof. This is our theme. And then uh, the plugins are uh, you guys. The analogy is falling apart. But we'll say you guys. You guys are the plugins. Extra features added to this room. So this is the order. Because I get new plugins every semester. You guys leave and you guys come. <laughs> but it's the same WordPress and the same, the same four walls. So this is the order that I would do the updates. Update your main WordPress software, then your themes, then your plugins. Again, I'll go into more detail in a moment, but here's the general concept. Let's check out, in our case, yes? If you 
don't have a WordPress site already, so you get the latest one or the one before that? I would get the latest one. Start with the latest one. That's why it's the most secure and the most up-to-date with the most features. Let's check out what WordPress is telling us that we need to update. So, I'm in the dashboard. You can either click on that spinning arrow or under the dashboard updates. Click there. <coughs> Thank you. Let's go back to, uh, to updates. And this is telling us an updated version of WordPress is available. It's telling us to go to 4.5.1. Our current version <coughs> is 4. Point, where, where is that at? They have, they have it somewhere on. Oh, here we go. Five. We've got 4.2.7. And it's telling us get the latest one. Don't click on any of these yet. Let me, let me explain. But it's saying you've got an older version of WordPress core. Now, WordPress, as I said earlier, is the largest web software out there. It's the biggest target. So that means there are people, unfortunately, literally, rooms full of people spending their nine to five jobs figuring out how to break this stuff. And so we have an older version, which might have vulnerabilities, might have issues, might have problems. If you've got still version 3.7, if you've got version 2.2, that's, you know, three years old, two years old, where people have figured out the problems. That's why you could get hacked. We could get hacked with our version 4.2. It's not that old. That's why we want to do updates to, to, to be safer. But we don't just simply want to click updates because, again, we might have a plugin or a theme that relies on version 4.2. And now when we upgrade to 4.5, everything breaks and our site doesn't work anymore. So my procedure would be, I'm telling you what to update in what order, but my procedure would be, a safe update path. Back up your site, like with the duplicator plugin. Every day that we end, every day that we end our time here, we use the duplicator plugin to make a backup for next week. But this is also a viable plugin to do to use when you're going to do your updates. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a backup of the whole site. Let me go back to step zero here. I'm going to say once a month. Whatever amount of time you want to do this, is, it can be set up to be automated and such. But let's assume I'm doing it manually. Once a month, I'm going to make a backup of the site. That may be too long. Maybe you're adding stuff very often. And what if something crashes and you take it back to your last backup? That's a month that you lost. Maybe you need to update yourself once a week or every two weeks. I'm just saying this is a, a thing to think about with backups. Make a backup of your site once in a while. I'm going to make a backup of the site. Then I'm going to update WordPress core. I'm going to test my site. That is, I'm going to go back to the home page. I'm going to click some links. I'm going to check my shopping cart. I'm going to test my site. I'm going to browse my site a bit. Is there anything wrong? If there's anything wrong, I have a backup that I can revert back to. This backup will take you back. Everything that you did will go back. So those updates that didn't work will go away. So if I did the test and there's something wrong, really wrong, probably I need to go back to my backup. If I test my site and there's no problem, then I'll do the next step, which is theme updates, update themes theme or themes. Actually, sorry, uh, why am I writing two? Um, for the backup site. If the site works well up to this point, you might want to consider making a backup at this point because we're still going to update several more things. And what if I go through seven out of nine updates? and the seventh one breaks everything. Then I have to back up all the way back to this point here where I have to do WordPress update again and all five of those updates again. So I can make as many of these backups as I want. So after testing my site here, maybe back it up. 
and then maybe do the update themes. Test the site. Updating your theme may have broken something. Maybe that theme was custom made for you someone a while, by someone a while ago and it relied on a certain version of WordPress and then it got updated and now something's broken. Test it. If something breaks when you update your theme, now you can go back to this spot here after you've updated this instead of all the way back here. If that worked, back that up. And the last thing, update plugins. And then rinse and repeat. Test site, backup site. If all of that worked, then this backup here is the one you really want to keep and store somewhere safe because you've got all of your updates, it's tested, it's worked, you've proven it, and you've got that backup. These other backups you made here are just temporary, you can delete them because you've got this one that has all your updates. And once a month, I'm going to have this one backup that is, a, that is an update and is functional from month to month so that when they release WordPress 5.0 and everything breaks, I can go back to this version here where everything worked. Um, it, it may be this every, um, every time you do a backup, no matter what jump it is, if it's a small jump, or, or just, just when it's a large jump. That's why this is still a little, a little complicated to fully teach, because it's going to depend on the person's site. If there are little updates, it might not be a big deal. I still, even with little updates, just to be safe, make one backup. I might not do the super testing and backing up in every single step here. I might just make one backup, make my updates, and then one final backup, and that's it. But this is, you know, really specific, just in case. Yes. I have a WordPress account that I've had for two years. I'm basically posting every single day. This is the first light bulb moment for me about backup of a WordPress site. I never knew this information before, so. When I go in to back up my, to update my WordPress core, is it likely that it's going to go from a 3.7 to a 4.5? And, and so I'm just going to have to do the backup and then test the site and then and then undo it if it doesn't work, if it breaks the link? Yes. That'd be the best thing. You'd want to make that backup first and then try to do it. And if that happens, if it breaks the link because of the update, then does it mean that... I can never do backups from that point forward? Updates. You might not be able to do updates from that point forward because you might have so many you know, plates spinning that when you move something, something breaks. So you might have to stay at that version of your software, which could be the security vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yes. With WordPress.com. Oh, with a WordPress.com, uh, that's a little different. They are automatically updating everything. Oh, thank God! I thought I, I thought I heard that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a good point. So all of this that we're talking about is related to WordPress.org site that we have on our own server. If you're using the WordPress.com server, they do it all for you. Oh, thank goodness! <laughs> yes. If there is a big jump like that, can you go to a, a version in between? You can, but it's not so obvious because. The, what you'll see here is they'll want, you know, we went from 4.2 to 4.5. Maybe it would have worked for us to go to 4.3. This is not going to have it there automatically. What you would have to do is go to WordPress.org and manually download the version in between, and it'll tell you how to install it and such. But the automatic will want to jump you to the latest. Why yes. did we use WordPress.org and not .com? .com is limited. .com will not let us, to, let us install plugins. And we need plugins for our shopping cart and for our Yoast plugin and all of that. .com works really well for blogging, but then for e-commerce and such, it has limitations, unless you pay a little too much, I think. Yes? Also, sometimes people 
download plugins, play with them, and then never use them on your site. I've heard it recommended that you delete those before you try doing even updates. Yeah, that we, we mentioned that a little bit last time in that we can have as many plugins as we want, but I was recommending only keep the plugins that are that you're actually using. Because even these ones that are not active are gonna be asking for updates. I'm not even using that plugin and it's using up my server space and my bandwidth and such checking back periodically. Is there a new version? Is there a new version? Is there a new version? And I'm not even using it and it's gonna take up resources. So yeah, keep your WordPress site lean, keep it lean in that it only use the plugins that you really need and remove the ones you don't, therefore they're not going to be begging for updates. And, and themes too, right? Themes as well, yes. Um, is there one other thing? Um, yes. The .com versus .org. Uh -huh. If I, is the ladies, do you, have a, do you have a question there, ladies? Being a little little loud there? The plugins, um, is there any other re reason, like, why would I use one over the other? Work. Well, that, that's the big idea, the, the plugins. That might be a very big thing because we want to create a shopping cart okay. and WordPress is not going to let us unless we fork over, I believe, $299 a year at least to, to get that feature. And with the .org version, we can use any plugin we want uh, for free. And if we don't have a shopping cart, then we can use .com. It might, be, it might be a very valuable way to do it there because then they keep track of the server and they do the updates and they keep the security up to date and so forth. Yes. I have a hard time hearing what she was saying, but I think she might be asking the same question. So if I have a WordPress.com, I'm not going to be allowed to add a shopping cart unless I pay a yearly fee of like two ninety nine. Yeah. And yeah. in order to change that from a .com to a .org, you you have to be. That was. Um... We'll touch on that discussion again a little later, but that was one of the things we talked about at, at the end of the last month, in that we would need to get a service provider. We would, know, we would go to Bluehost.com, GoDaddy.com, HostMonster.com, one of these providers where you can purchase your domain name and your hosting, where then you can have your full featured WordPress. And you can transfer from the WordPress.com to your own personal <coughs> WordPress, sometimes colloquially called WordPress.org. Um, you can transfer from your .com to the .org, but then you it's a different system, and then now you'll be responsible for updates and backups and all of that. But you'll have the full power of all plugins and other features. So my updates are telling me then I need to update WordPress, I need to update these plugins, and I need to update the theme. Now they are out of the order that I'm recommending. I'm saying WordPress core, then themes, then plugins. And here it shows core, then plugins and themes. So just switch those around. What it's telling us is we need these. So um, let's, just, let's, let's go through this backup procedure. Not every single step, of course, but we've already got a backup of the site from last week. That's good enough. <coughs> we'll say here on your updates screen, go ahead and select update now. <clears throat> this will connect back to the wordpress.org mothership and it will download the software, unpack it, install it. It will activate. Right now, if someone were to visit your site, uh, if this were your real site, it would say under maintenance mode. So your site would be in maintenance mode. Um, so that's why an idea also we should say here about when to do your updates. Do them at off hours. Do updates at off hours. So maybe like 8 p.m., 10 p.m., 6 a.m., I don't know. When you're not getting so much traffic to your site, because if someone's trying to go to your site and buy your product and you're in maintenance mode at 2 p.m., you're going to lose sales. You don't know if this is going to go smoothly or you're going to have to uh, re back up. You don't know if that's going to take you take you out of commission. So try to do it at off hours, and your site will probably be faster anyway, and it'll do these updates faster because less people are connecting. So eventually, hopefully, you get welcome to WordPress 451. You see a, a video here that explains a little bit about itself. Um, the WordPress team loves jazz, 
and they codename all of their WordPress versions with a famous jazz musician. So this is WordPress 4.5 Coleman. And they have uh, a little video that tells you what's new. Let's play it briefly. WordPress 4.5 <coughs> Coleman, named for jazz legend Coleman Hawkins. Streamlines your workflow, whether you're writing your content or building your website. With responsive previews in the customizer, you don't need your phone to check out your site on the mobile web. Just use the layout toggles to preview your website on different size screens. So that means you'll be able to check if your site is mobile ready, if it's, if it's responsive, if it looks good on big screens and small screens. That's built into WordPress there. While you're there, stop by the site identity settings and, if your theme supports it, add a logo to your website. We've made subtle changes in the editor that will improve your writing experience. Now, when you click to insert a link, a field appears in line, allowing you to insert a URL, whether it's on your site or elsewhere on the web. This is pretty useful. It was that when you selected text and wanted to add a link, a brand new screen appeared, popped up to kind of take you out of out of out of your your flow. Now there's a there's a pop-up right in the middle there where you can quickly add internal or external links. So something minor like that might help you write faster. And this release sees the introduction of even more formatting shortcuts to keep you typing and improve your flow. Enclose your text in back ticks to turn it into code. Or add three dashes to insert a horizontal line. And that's just a glimpse at WordPress 4.4 or add three. So there are shortcuts that you can do quickly. Instead of going up to the button and clicking it, you can just type the, the shortcut. And there's a list in here about all the shortcuts. <coughs> so if you quickly want to make a dash line, instead of going up here to click it, you just type two dashes and then it makes the line. And in the screen, it shows you some other items, smart image resizing and so forth. And if you look over here, again, it'll tell you what's new. And under the hood, it'll tell you about, well, we fixed this bug, and we fixed this problem, and your site is more secure, and all of that. Sounds great. It might have broken your site, so then that's why I would, you don't have to do this, but this is where I would go to visit my site. Okay, my homepage is good. I would go to the About Us. Looks good. Do this, do that. So you would test it, just like my workflow has here. I would back it up first. I would do the update. I would test the site. Make another backup, just in case. You know, you go back to my updates and see, well, what's next? Themes are next. Before I make any of these updates, this goes back to the concept earlier about use what you need. I don't need three of these themes. I've got one theme active, and in my recommendation, I want, you know, what, uh, have you heard of that, that, uh, that phrase for the British kings, an heir and a spare. Have you heard of that? It means they want to have an heir, and just in case a spare prints. So here with WordPress, I want to have the heir and the spare. I want to have my main theme, and just in case another theme, in case my main theme, something goes wrong with it. I don't need five themes hanging around here. I don't need three themes taking up my resources. So I need my main theme and a backup theme. So before I back up any of these, I'm never going to use these old themes, the 2013, 2014. I might keep the, the newest one, 2016, and maybe 2015, or, or whatever, but I don't want a lot of themes. Let's go to the Appearance menu, Themes. Let's say all three of these want updates. I've got my main theme, and I want one spare theme, 2014. Therefore, sorry, 2013, you don't want it. It's just taking up resources. To delete a theme, Hover your mouse over the theme and then click Theme Details. And in the bottom right corner, you'll have Delete. You notice that version was 1.5, and it's telling us we need 1.9. This might have been a very insecure theme. We don't even need it. Let's click Delete. Hover your mouse over the theme you don't want, click Theme Details, and then click Delete on the bottom right. And WordPress will let us have 10 themes hanging around, but only one is the active. So keep your main theme and your spare theme, just in case. This has happened to me. 
that for a client, for some reason, the client got hacked. Well, actually, the reason was that the theme was old. And suddenly what would happen is when someone visited the site, all of this text would appear at the top for links to gambling sites and medical sites and such. The way that was fixed was the theme that was hijacked, we switched it over to a clean theme and then deleted the old theme. And that basically fixed it because that malicious code was attached to that malicious theme, that old broken theme. So we had a backup theme that was clean we activated that, and in that case, that was all that that needed. Your infection of a virus on your site might be worse than that. You don't know. But um, that's why I like to keep a backup theme. Do you stay, in that situation, you stay with the backup theme, and you forgot the old theme from that point on? No, we deleted it. The old theme which was infected, we went in and then we selected delete. And then yeah, that's definitely a big concern. Uh, that was with that particular customer. They hadn't updated their site in a while, and <coughs> we told them there's these vulnerabilities, and this is why you got hacked. And for the moment, let's switch it to this other design so your site at least still works, you're still making money, and so forth. And then perhaps think about changing the design of it to look how it used to because the old design was hacked. Let's go back now to the uh, updates. I need both of these themes updated so we can quickly select them both and select update themes because I want the air and the spare. Notice it tells you you're going into maintenance mode, setting things up, eventually out of maintenance mode. At this case, what we at this point, what we could do then is back to visit site. Test it out a bit, everything looks good. Make a backup. Back to the updates. And then here we've got in my case, two updates. You might have more or less. What I will say about plugins, let me make a sub item here. Update the most important plugins first. Because I might have seven plugins to update. One is a Twitter plugin that shows my latest tweets. And one is my shopping cart plugin. If I were to select all, it would just go in alphabetical order. And it could be that it goes through a bunch of plugins and everything installs just fine. And it gets to the seventh out of eight. And that new plugin then crashes everything because that plugin relied on a different plugin and it relied on something else. So now I've got to bring my site back to life, back to my last backup, and start again. Start, did this plugin work? Did this plugin work? Did this plugin work? So instead of wasting time like that, perhaps update my most important plugins first. In our particular case, we have Akismet and Yoast SEO. Akismet, remember, is our spam fighting plugin, and Yoast SEO is the one that helps us optimize our site. I can't really say which of these two is more important, but in the example of if I've, if I've got these and my shopping cart plugin, definitely the shopping cart plugin is most important. I'm running my store off of that, my inventory is there. Uh, so I would update the shopping cart plugin if we had that one. Here, in your opinion, which is more important, spam fighting or SEO? I think they're both, but show of hands, spam fighting? Show of hands, SEO? So we'll go with spam fighting first. Uh, so I'm going to select 
akismet and then update that one. Should be successful. I will return back to the updates and then select the, the next one, Yoast for SEO. Update that one. Obviously, I would be testing my site just in case between updates, but obviously, this is a lot of. I've got 10 steps and a sub step here. This is a lot to be doing over and over every month. And yes, eventually, we all get a little lazy about it. But I would say at the very least, you're going to make an update before you, you're going to make a backup before you start, and a backup when it's all done. And hopefully nothing goes wrong in the middle. Usually doesn't, but if you've got really old software, <coughs> that's more prone to problems. Is the access to Logo in Word, WordPress or is that the server? Is the what? The line says huge SEO issues. Oh, line. this. This, um, this is because when we set up our site last month, there was an option there that says allow the search engines to find you, yes or no. And we said no. So the SEO plugin is telling us there's a huge problem here. We've told the search engines to not find us. That's fine for us at the moment, but when we're going to put this live eventually, we definitely want to change that to let the search engines find us. So if I return back to the, uh, if I return to the updates, there should be nothing left to update. And in theory, I've got the latest version of all the software, the most secure versions, the most feature-rich feature -rich versions. And if this were my real site, then I would make one more backup at this point, and I've got my site ready. So you should see here that updates are good, but they could be problematic. And one of the other big problems with updates, when we do our update theme, that could remove all your customization. If you customize the background color of your site, and the size of your text, and then you go here to update theme, it's going to give you the latest version of the code, which you might lose your customization. If you've got, so I'll say here, 5a, if you customized via code your site, use a child theme. We touched on child themes before a bit. The concept is, it is a, it's a bit of a setup that uh, we create a child theme which inherits the features of the parent theme and when we do the update of the theme it changes the parent theme code but not our custom code in the child theme. We'll get to this topic a little deeper a little later once we customize our site via code because this, these updates to our theme that we do with the plain old customize interface, those should be safe. These changes are being saved into the database that WordPress can keep track of. And when you update your theme from 1.7 to 1.9, it can see those changes in the database. On a technical level, if we get to the point where we, where we actually edit the code of our site, <coughs> WordPress is not quite keeping track of this the same way. And then when we do update theme, it won't, it won't really pay attention what we did here, and when we changed this line of code here to be font 25 instead of 15, WordPress will just put 15 back in because it has to give you the latest version of the code. So we'll talk about child themes later, we'll talk about editing code later. And that's something also to be aware of about why updates could be bad. What if you uh, hired someone to write a lot of custom code for your site? It's going to be gone when you update that theme unless you do child themes. It's a big rigmarole for updates, but it is useful because it keeps you secure. 
and safe. And when we talk about, as we get into the site about products and credit cards and home addresses and such, we want our site to be as secure as possible. We don't want an errant plug-in that made sparkles in the corner now causing us to get hacked because it hasn't been updated in nine months. Any questions at this point? It's called My Little Sparkly.